Hey guys, um, my name is Mickey and I will be doing a Dungeons and Dragons uh, painting tutorial. This is my first try, so we'll see how it turns out. Um, right here I have a Pegasus figure. Um, it's pretty cool looking actually. Um, there's a lot of detail on it and I painted it with white primer. Um, I prefer white primer. I find that it covers a little bit better and you can actually see where you've painted. Um, color also tends to look better on the white primer. Um, so I'm going to start, and you always start from the bottom up. So I'm going to start by his feet over there. And you just do little strokes. Um, and you work in small areas. Right now we're just doing the base. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a little bit messy. And uh, do small areas, just like that. Be prepared to get your fingers dirty. <laughs> You go. And this whole belly area will eventually be completely black. There you go. See that? And we'll move on to the next leg. Right on this side. Try to get a good look at your figure before you start painting. So that you know what you're um, dealing with. Yeah, so we're just going to do that across his whole body, and um, yeah, we'll see the result. Okay, so as you can see, um, I did his whole body color black. Um, you want to work from the bottom layer up, so it's usually skin, cloth, um, metal armor, you know, that kind of stuff. You go in order. Um, this way, you don't have to repeat yourself. Um, so next, we're going to do um, a blue for this cloth. I pick blue because it, it's it'll stand out quite a bit with um, a black horse, I find. I already started on this side to give you a bit of an idea. Um, just use a thick brush again. Um, don't be afraid to lather it on. It's cloth, um, so you want to make sure that you get in all the little wrinkles. Um, it's important to try to not miss any spots on the first go around. I'll make it a little bit easier for you later on. I'm a little sloppy with my painting, um, so if you're neater than me, that that's great. Uh, I usually have to do a lot of layering for getting the camera over here. Go all the way around. I kind of make up on the spot as to what I'm painting. I don't really know where I'm going with this. Um, so you'll see I'll, I might change my mind throughout this video as to <laughs> what I actually want to do. Try not to, like I said, I'm very sloppy, um, but try not to cover any of the detailed parts like right like in this area if you don't have to because you don't want to um, Overpaint. By doing that, you end up covering a lot of detail, and the texture goes away with the more layers of paint that you put on. So try to use, in those areas, not as much paint. Okay, so I'm going to finish up this cloth. Um, it'll probably take me, I don't know. 20 minutes total to get in every little spot and, you know, make sure I'll clean up a little bit. But, yeah. So, I'll finish that up. Okay, so I finished the blue part of uh, this figure. Um, I think I got all of it. <laughs> I miss some spots sometimes, but uh, you always check at the end. Usually what I'll do is I'll finish one part move on to something else, and then come back and check, because your eyes pick up new things every time you look. Um, so what I did in between break is I um, painted the tail. I didn't paint it originally, because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, um, but I decided to stick with the black. The way you do that is by putting a little bit of paint on your brush. So put some paint on there. Dip the tip in a little bit of water, and let the water run through the lines. 
and the water will carry the paint down in to the, all the cracks so you don't have to dig in there and make it dark and you know, it gets very frustrating. So let the water do the work for you. So I'm going to do that same technique right here on the main, this area. So I'm going to get some of my black paint, dip the tip into the water, and start at the top and let the water run down. So there's a rain right there, that's why I'm not painting in that area. But and this way you can actually also distinguish um, between the face and where the mane is. Eventually you'll be able to do that because I'll be shading in, but at the moment um, you can't really see too much because uh, it's all just plain black. So you going to try to get in there. You see? So you could actually see a little bit lighter. And then you got the bottom part over here, which you're going to do the same thing. Dip in the water and just bring it down. Again, if you get some on the, the blue part, don't worry about it. You can always come back. Figures take a long time. Um, if you try to rush them, that's when you get messy. And I'm very particular about my figures. I like when they look neat. Probably doesn't look like that right now, but I promise you, it will be neat at the end. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, you'll get used to it. After a while, you get used to picking up certain spots, and figures will have the same pattern. So, you know, in most, you know, especially horse figures, um, they all wear some kind of armor. Um, you learn where certain pieces will be and what the material will be made out of. So I know right away that this piece right here is actually metal. So I know right away that I'm going to be painting that um, a silver or something like that. And then there's parts where you'll learn that are individual to the figure. Um, like this where the bridle will probably match the cloth part of um, his uniform. Um, and that's where you'll see there's differences in artistry. And um, if you look up the same figure online, Ten people have made it different. So I'm just going across the forelock over here. The same technique I used on the tail and the mane. Okay, so the next part I'm going to do is the bridle, right over here. I'm going to paint it the same color I painted the cloth around the body. Uh, just small strokes. Uh, you can use a smaller brush if you prefer. Um, I don't see this as being too difficult, so I'm going to stick with a larger one. Um, I have, because this is oil paint, I have some paint thinner that I'm using instead of water. I do prefer acrylics. But, um, Again, I use this because the colors are nice and bright. Okay, so that's the rain. Again, this is very rough. It's a first base uh, color, so it does not have to be perfect. You do cleanups after. Cleanups make your life easier, um, so you don't have to worry about it on the first try. Because if you end up wanting to change your concept, um, if you try to do it perfect the first time, it's very frustrating to have to redo it again. So that's why I do it a little bit rougher, because many, many times I end up changing what I want. Not so much on this one, because this is a pretty basic figure. Um, there's a lot of detail on it, but there's not uh, that much that I'm unfamiliar with. Um, so I'm going to let this dry right now, and then we'll come back and uh, start again. You can let this paint dry for about 10 minutes, just so it hardens up, and you can actually, you know, touch more than one area of the figure. You don't want to rub the paint off as you're going. So I'm going to give it 10 minutes to rest. Okay, so the next part that I'm going to do is the breastplate. Um, I don't know if you can see, but if you look close, it's actually, this is a lightning bolt. So I'm, I'm not going to paint that, I'm going to save that for later, and I'm actually going to paint that separately, probably around a, you know, a yellowish co color, 
um, his uh, back plate is actually also uh, a lightning bolt. Um, so you're gonna go gently around that. If you get a little bit of it, it's okay. Um, so while the paint dried, I spot checked. Um, it's good to do that every once in a while to double check everything and make sure you didn't miss anything. So take your time. I'm using obviously a smaller tip brush. Um, this way you can actually get in without causing too much of a mess. And once I get the outside you'll be able to see the outline. So on this side I made a little bit of a mess. But that's okay. I'll clean that up. Okay. Um, if you do have a big mess like that, just paint the whole thing so you know where you, where you are. And you can come back later and paint the lightning bolt separate. So unlike the other side, or I did the opposite, we're going to do it this way on this side because I made a bit of a boo-boo. That's normal. It happens. Paint leaks, drops. Um, you learn to kind of go with it. And since it's underneath the main, you won't be able to see it very much. So, uh, underneath, so this side I left the bolts unpainted, and this side I painted them. And we'll fix that once we get to that phase of painting. So I'm also going to go and I'm going to do the back panel now. Um, you can notice on the back panel that this is actually a cloud with lightning bolts. So I'm going to leave those white and just paint the metal. I'm painting it um, a shiny gray because it'll be you know, it's acting as metal. You'll notice that there's actually also, there's the legs of a person on this figure. Um, it came with a bust. I'm just going to be painting the Pegasus for you guys. I'm actually not a fan of painting uh, humanoid figures. I find them to be irritating and very boring to paint, honestly. I like painting monsters. Um, I usually make my boyfriend paint the human figures because I'm not that good at it. I prefer this. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up. And then we'll do the lightning bolts of the figure. So the next part we're going to be working on is the lightning bolts on the back of um, the back plate. So what we're going to do is, because they're sticking out slightly, um, they're not so noticeable. So it'll be a little bit more difficult to just straight uh, paint. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it through shading. So you're going to take a thick brush and you're going to put, I'm using a yellow because it's lightning. Um, rub off most of the paint so you have just a little bit at the edge. This is called a dry brush. And you're going to rub it in the general area. You're going to cover more than you want to, but that's okay. And you'll notice it's going to make the bolts pop. Just like that. And then after you cover the area, you're going to come back over with the, the uh, silver and paint around them. So what you've essentially done is paint the whole area lightly with the yellow uh, so that the bolts uh, 
can be seen and then you cut around with the silver so I've done one side already um, it'll look much better once the uh, wash is done when a black wash is done that whole area will be highlighted um, so you'll be able to see the bolts much easier and the cloud will be gray so we're going to come back to this side Tilt this figure a little bit so you guys can see. Okay. And just slowly cut around the bolts. And this is a little bit easier than doing it just straight away. There's a little bit less room for error here. Okay, there we go. And then you're going to paint the cloud white, which I've done already, and just let that sit. So we're going to focus on the face a little bit now. Um, we're going to go back to the bridle. Again, I jump around because this way I can gather my thoughts a little bit. Um, the next part that we're going to do is we're going to do the same effect that we did on the back plate. We're going to do it on the bridle because there is some texture here. We want to pick up on that. So again, you're going to do a small amount of paint on your brush, or most of it off, as you can see I'm doing, and then gently rub across the area. Don't press down. Just go against the grain, and the paint will gently rub off. So you could do it across the entire grain, like so, and you'll see that it'll get on the. Uh, course a little bit, it's not that much of an issue. So we're going to do the nose band as well. Okay. And to get that all in, let it rest and step back from a little bit. So I'm doing yellow so it'll match the back. So this is what it looks like so far. It's not too shabby. Um, obviously the yellow has gone a little bit on the main too much, so I'll clean that up. Um, you get used to having to repaint things over and over and over again. That's what, um, it's the only negative part I feel to this is that a lot of it can be pretty uh, repetitive. So we're going to do that main again so you can get the full look at what it looks like. And this is also why you do a thin layer to start because you have to assume that you will be going over it again. So this puts less paint in that area um, so you don't lose as much texture. So this is what we've done so far. Okay, more in there. There you go. And uh, that's it. I'm going to switch to this side and do the same thing, fix it up. Um, I also just suggest that if you are using a spray sealer, every once in a while, um, if you get to a major point in your figure, so right now, um, I would suggest sealing it so that um, the paint that you've already put on does not rub off. It won't affect uh, the new paint that you put on, but it, it'll conceal the paint that you've already done. So by touching it and rubbing on it, you won't lose anything that you've currently done. Um, I only suggest that if you use a spray paint. If you use a paint on sealer, I would wait to the end. I just find that the spray sealer 
works a little bit better in that regard. Okay, so um, we're going to let that dry a little bit and then we'll come back. Okay, so the next part we're going to do is underneath, um, there's a leather strap uh, for the breastplate. So I'm just going to color this brown. I prefer a little bit of a darker brown. Um, you could go with straight leather brown. This is dried bark brown. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's a small detail. This is going to be the same color that the saddle is going to be. Um, you can make them different leather colors. I just like when they match. I think it, think it gives it a, a little bit of unity. And we'll go back over the black. That's a, it's a hard area to get uh, a straight color on. So we'll see. Okay, so we're going to go to the saddle now. Again, we're going to ignore the uh, person sitting there. I have the second half. Um, I just did not glue it on uh, so we could focus on this area. You can't really tell, but I actually am using a very large magnifying glass um, with a light on it. And that helps tremendously, so you could see the details that you're working on quite clearly. It helps um, you see details that you probably wouldn't be able to see with your plain eye. Um, I guess you, you can do it without because if you can't see it when you're staring and painting at it, um, normal people who are playing with the figure aren't really going to notice those same details. So if you miss little things here and there, it's not a big deal. There's a lot of times where I will paint over details that I think are way too much work and that will never get appreciated because they're too small. Like there's lines in here, you can't really see, let me adjust my light. There's little lines in the saddle here that um, when I wash it, you'll be able to notice. But besides that, um, there's not too much there to see. So we're just going to do a, a plain brown on the saddle. And the shading that we will do will affect the saddle more. Okay, and there's a star up here, which I'm going to paint so that um, it doesn't look like a big blue blob. There's a boot in there somewhere, which you can see if you actually look close enough. Um, I can't see at this angle, but we'll get a better look at it after. Okay, so now what we're going to do next is we're going to start working on some shading and making this figure actually stand out. So right now, the figure is pretty much, minus the wings, um, all based. Um, and now you could start building. So what we'll do is we'll shade um, fur next. Like I said, I like to work from the bottom up. Um, I'm going to give him four white socks um, and a white blaze on his face. Um, I'm trying to mimic a fire Um and after we do that, we can start working on the clothing. So our next section is going to be the fur of the feet. I've already done one to give you an example. So at the end, it'll look like this. Um, all four of them, I'm going to give white socks to mimic a Shire horse. I cheat, and um, I actually, a lot of times, I will use reference photos. Um, I rather look at a photo and see how it's done and try to make it up from my own memory. I feel like it turns out in the end uh, a little bit better. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the bottom. You put um, a decent amount of paint on your brush and you're going to start from the bottom and paint the whole thing white. Uh, don't go too far up because as you can see we're going to shade it up so it fades into the fur after a certain point. So make sure you get everything. This is the reason why I didn't um, paint the hoof black when we originally started, because I knew I wanted to do this. 
So after you get the base done, you take all the extra paint off of your brush. Take it all off, rub it on a paper towel or your station, and then you're going to take the brush and you're going to flick up using the paint that is left over onto the figure. So use that and you're kind of going to rub it against the leg and you'll see that it will slowly move up. Pick where you want to end and try to make it consistent with all four feet. Here you go. If you need a little bit extra paint, go for it. You want to make it look consistent. You're trying to make it look like the white is fading, not that you're highlighting. So in the back here, it looks just a little bit highlighted. So you want to rub it in a little bit more. There you go. So then you have a shaded wolf. And you can take all that white off, and now you can paint the hoof black. Um, I'm painting the hoof black because it'll stand out a little bit more. You could leave it white. I don't think that that would end up looking unpainted in the end. Just my opinion. So go all the way around. And don't forget the underneath important. When people handle figures, they flip them all over the place, and you'll get that one person who sees and comments on it, and I hate that, so <laughs> make sure you get everything. Okay, so that's the two front feet, and we're going to repeat that on the two back feet. So again, you're going to take you know, a decent amount on your brush. Okay, go to the back. Start at the bottom, cover the whole bottom, all sides, you can do both of them while you're at it, while you have all that extra paint on there, don't waste it. There you go. The hardest part is trying to get the inside done. It's because there tends to be stuff in the way. Okay, so take all that extra paint off. Come in and you rub up. There you go. And make it as heavy as you want. There you go. The point is to make it look like it's faded. So you, you do want to work your way up a little bit higher on that end. See, so you still got the back to do over here. Move against the green. And then there we go. So now we have three finished. You definitely see a difference there in quality. Take a little bit more on your brush. Okay. And you're going to wipe up. Remember, don't push too hard. You don't want to, you're not painting, you're just spreading what's on there already. Okay. This figure is a little annoying that it has a stand that goes up like that, kind of gets in the way. There we go. So I need a little extra. That's all four whited, and now we're gonna once again finish by painting the last two hooves. So you'll see also that the reason why I start from the bottom of the figure and work my way up is that I use the wings as a handle. If I had painted the wings first, paint would be gone by now because I would have been rubbing on it so much. So as you move further and further on the figure, this is the stage where you want to try to be really neat. 
because once you shade something, it's very hard to repeat the shading. So if you need to fix what you've done, um, you usually have to start over and rebase it and then re-shade, which can be very, very, very frustrating. But it happens, so be prepared. Okay, so that's all four uh, feet completely shaded in. So now he has four white socks. Okay, so now we're gonna move on and um, we'll shade his face in. Okay. Okay, so unfortunately for the next part I had to do, um, it would have been very hard for me to film doing because it was facial work. And doing work on the face, you really have to be up close and personal with your figure. So um, I wouldn't have been able to do that properly. Um, on camera, but I'll explain what I did now. Um, what I did is I gave him a blaze, so I just took some with a thin brush, just white paint, and I used and I did a marking um, across his face on both sides. He has uh, the same marking, um, and I also gave him a white pupil. Um, I suggest when painting a figure, especially when it's an animal or a very popular monster, look it up online. You know. And then you get to see what it looks like, and um, you'll notice that with uh, Shire horses, that their eyes are usually very black, um, but that doesn't look good for a figure, so I usually will give a figure like that a white people, just so you can see where the eye actually is. Um, this is also the most popular color for a Shire, which is why I picked it. Um, so yeah, so overall right now we have a horse... Um, with four white socks, completely black, and a white blaze on his face. Um, right now we're going to do a black wash, which is our first wash we're going to be doing so far. Um, you can buy pre-made black washes. I personally think that it's a waste of money when you can make yours at home like I do. You just take a little tin foil, make a little boat, pour some water in there, and then, you know, a couple, uh paintbrush filled things of uh, black paint. Um, you could do washes in many different colors. I'm choosing black for this particular figure um, because it'll bring out the highlights and all the wrinkles of the material um, and it's pretty universal so I'm going to basically cover the entire figure in including the face and the tail and um, the back plate with this black wash. You can do it with specific colors but then I would not suggest doing it over the entire figure. Um, you do that for specific areas. So I'll probably end up making a lighter wash for the mane and tail. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do that yet. I might just do some dry brushing, but we'll get there. So let's start with this wet wash. Um, you need a very, very thick brush for this. You want it to be fluffy because um, you're putting a little bit of paint on it and you're letting it drip down. So what you're going to do, stick your brush in your wash, get it nice and filled with paint, pick a open area and just start slowly painting. And what's going to happen is it's going to fill in all these cracks and it'll make the appearance of ruffles. This helps a lot with um, shading and light. You want to make sure you get all of those cracks filled. So start at the top and honestly just let it fall down to the bottom and what will end up happening is it will gather at the bottom it may drip off, that's fine um, but when the water evaporates and the paint stays, it makes a nice effect so you'll be able to see where exactly all the wrinkles are if you need to, you can take a little paint off your brush um, sometimes I find if I have too much, then I end up just glooping it up um, and then it just looks wet Okay, so if it gathers to the bottom, you could spread it out a little bit in all the holes. I'm also going to do it on this back plate here. So you're going to start at the top and just let it flow down. So you see that when I did that, it picked up all of the wrinkles in the clouds and it made the lightning bolts stay up, uh, stand out quite a bit, which um, actually looks pretty good. See? So, and then make sure you get underneath. There go. And here's the side. 
same thing. You really can't put too much um, because it will evaporate and uh, a lot of it does disappear. So we'll do this side next. Same thing. Get on there. Try not to forget any areas. You can do multiple um, layers of this. You don't really need to. I would only do that if you really notice that you've missed a spot. But you see how it really makes those wrinkles stand out. I'm going to do the front breastplate as well. This does a great job of highlighting. It makes um, impressions stand out. Um, you get to see details that you wouldn't necessarily see without it. See, so it looks great. And then I'm also going to do his face and the uh, bridal. Get it in there. It will look shiny, but I promise that goes away when it dries because that's just the water. So I put a little bit too much there. So you just dry your brush off and come back and spread it out. And that'll go away pretty quick. Make sure you get in some nostrils so you can see that he does in fact have nostrils. There you go. Okay, so now I'm going to do his feet. This is also great for when um, you're shading stuff because it blends everything together. So just do a quick. The effect is pretty noticeable. It's Um, the best way to make sure that you have a good wash that isn't too watery is when you have your wash, take your paintbrush and run it up the side. And if you have a residue that goes that um, stays on the side of the tin foil, then you know you have a good consistency. If there's nothing left and it just runs all the way down, then you need a little bit more paint. Um, if you notice that you're make, leaving streaks behind. Um, that means that you have too much paint and you should add a little bit more water. Again, too much paint, so you just take that right off. And there you go. So, so far, we're doing quite well. It's coming out better than I thought it would. <laughs> so that's what we have so far. There you go. See, that's the way the back looks. So the clouds, you can actually notice, the, it works well because the uh, wash made them dark. There you go. So the next thing we're going to do is the most difficult part of this figure, and that is the wings. So when you're doing wings, you need to figure out if you want to go, if you want to match them to the color palette that you are using on the horse. So in this instance, it would be a black, a gray, and a blue, or if you want to go completely different, which is okay. Um, there's a lot of figures that I've done where I've made the wings uh, completely separate from uh, the completely se separate color palette, um, and that's up to the artist to decide. Um, I think I'm going to stay with grays and blues for this one because it looks like there is a storm theme, um, so I want to stick with that theme. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to get my color palette together for the wings. Okay, so next is the wings, which like I said are the most difficult part. Um, I'm not even quite sure how I want to do this right now. Um, I usually, like I said, I'm kind of going uh, making it up as I go. Um, but I figured out the color palette that I want to do, which is a range of whites, grays, dark, dark blues, and light blues. Um, to kind of match his current theme. Um, so what I'm going to do is mix up a bunch of things and kind of shade out the wings. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start out light. So I'll leave this part white. This is the base, so I still have to paint it white. 
um, and then shade into black and then shade into blue. So basically the smallest feathers are going to be white, these medium feathers are going to be uh, black and it's going to fade into a blue. Um, so I'll show you how I do that. Um, we start out first with the white. It's actually very similar to the way we did the feet. All fading is pretty much like that. So you start out and you put a layer of white across and you want to go past the point where you want it to stay white because you're using the white to create the gray. The most difficult part about the wings is that you have to do it four times because you have two wings and two sides um, and to try to make it consistent on both sides is um, hard to do. Um, so some people will do two sides one color and then the inside color is another. I prefer to keep them all the same because these are feathers. So working with feathers is much different than working with uh, scale wings like dragon wings. These are more bird wings. Um, oh crap. Um, so that uh, technique differs due to that. So what I did is I took a little black on my brush. Um, since we're starting out light, you're gonna take. You only need a little bit of black. Um, so you're gonna start close to the white and shade along that line. You're gonna create a little bit of a border, and this plays the middle part of the uh, transition. And then you lightly want to fade into the white. Okay, just like that. You can take a little bit more white, place it on the tip so that stays white, and then you fade that back out. So it's a mixture of fading, just finding a balance, honestly, between um, the lightness in this corner and the darkness that is coming out this way. So you're switching quite a bit between the two. So I took some more black on my brush. I'm going to in a little bit more so you guys can see. Um, again, starting in the middle and working your way out. So you see how it's already becoming a little bit darker? Towards the middle and working your way out. I'm not quite sure how dark I want to go yet, um, but I'm kind of liking the way this is turning out, so I'm just going to roll with it. Um, it's really hard to mess up shading, honestly, um, because if you make it too dark, you just add a little bit of white, and it brings it right back towards the middle again. So as you get further out, you can add a little bit more dark. Um, with texture like this, I like to add a little bit water of water, which is what I just did. So that makes it go into the crevices a little bit more and helps shade it out. So I'm getting a little bit darker up here. And every once in a while, I'll just bring it all the way down so you keep the color even. There you go. And a little bit more black to the outside. Good. So now I'm starting to reach the border where I want to start transitioning over to the blue. So in order to do that, we're going to first completely fill in this area. So use that water and cover all those feathers. So I'm going to make these feathers completely black. like that. A little bit of water. Um, depending on what paint you have, um, the paint could be very watery on its own and in that case you really don't need to add any more water. I only add it when I find that um, I'm, I'm stroking and there's no, and the paint isn't moving. 
So if you reach that point and you see there's no paint really going anywhere, then you can add a little bit of water. Because paint dries over time also, So if, especially if you're working on a figure for a while and um, you're not really seeing much change as you, uh, as you go. Okay, so now I, I want this to be a little bit lighter. So again, you're going to start over on this side, use that white, and spread across. And lightly, lightly brush because what you end up doing is highlighting the darker feathers. There you go. Okay, good. So I like that this came out, so I'm going to leave that the way it is. Let's see. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the blue. And I have this shiny blue which was actually given to me from the Reaper website that I um, purchased the figure from. This is where I get all my figures. Um, I strongly recommend it. Um, great quality, great shipping. Um, I really, that's the only place I buy my figures from. It's fantastic. Um, and they have great paints as well. So this is um, what I'm going to use for the wings. You have to be careful when mixing different um, types of paints, different brands because they mix differently and this this is a uh, different um, this is like a shiny metallic-y color which um, I thought would be interesting so we're going to do the same concept where you're gonna start at one end and fade out so we're gonna start towards the middle here a little bit on your brush especially when you don't know what the outcome is gonna be between the two different uh, paints. So you start layering on the edge of the last wings. Just like that. Just to give it a hint. You can move in a little bit more even. Just to give a little hint of it. And then you could start on the outside. You want to make a border. Okay, so this is when I would use some water to fill in those cracks right there. there you go. It makes your paint last a lot longer also by uh, using a little bit of water to stretch it out. And this way it keeps you from uh, getting too dark as well. Okay, so you know that the tips of your wings are going to be the darkest. Let's see if I can get a better shot over here. The tips of your wings are going to be the darkest. So um, you can paint those full blue. And then you can work the opposite direction. So I'm trying to make the flight wings stand out because they are um, the most important, I guess. Um, that's where your eye gets drawn to. Add a little bit of water. Mix that in. Good. Okay. So I'm not crazy about it, but it um, looks, looks pretty good. I want to make it a little bit darker. You can um, fade in that blue to the rest so it's not such a shock when you get to the end. There you go. And don't forget that there's feathers all the way down there at the bottom. A lot of times I forget that and I end up, I'm good at the top, but um, when you get all the way down, you miss an entire section. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to use a little bit more white. I'm going to go back over this one more time, just to highlight everything. And there you have it. That's one wing. This just has to get repeated 
three more times. <laughs> That's really just the worst of it, is that you have to, you know, redo. But, um, I think they look pretty good. I'm gonna stick with this. Um, I think it does a great job of tying the whole figure together. Um, and this is what we've come up with. Um, like I said, you can see how, um, just by rolling with your first idea, how things can evolve. When I first started, you know, I knew I was going to start with a black horse, but I wasn't sure, you know, what else was going to come. And um, once you get a basic color palette, you can branch off of that. So you see that, you know, there I've incorporated um, all the grays, you know, from the... This is the same color that's up here, and the blue is similar to the uh, skirt that is going around. Um, and, you know, there is yellow involved. Um, but yeah, it ties everything together. So what you're going to do um, also at the end, uh, when you completely finish the wings, is you're going to reuse that black wash that we made up before. And you're going to rub it very, very, very lightly with that thick brush. into those crevices because that brings out all those all those little divots so just put it at the top and let it soak down if you see that it puddles up at the bottom feel free to uh, Soak it up with a dry brush. See how it uh, fell down a little bit? Not a big deal. That can get wiped right off. Just use a dry brush. Use a uh, one that hasn't been used before because that'll soak up the most. So you can just bring that right back up. And there you have it. There's your wing. Um, I'm going to do the rest and then I will show you the results. Alright, so um, I just finished doing all four wings, which actually uh, didn't take too long. It took about, I don't know, half an hour to get all of them done and even. Um, again, that's the most difficult part is to make them as even and similar looking as possible. Um, my suggestion is to create an order that you go in, so you know, make a mark. So say, I um, want it to be white up to this area, gray up to this area, black up to here, and then blue, you know, out to the edge. And this way, you have a marker, and that marker is on every single wing, and you can just paint up to that area. Um, this is the finished figure. Um, I think it came out pretty good. Um, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my first uh, painting tutorial. I hope to do more in the future. Uh, please tell me if you like it. Bye, guys.